I'm going to be talking about cybersecurity. And I think one of the very cool things about both AI and security is that there's there can be a little bit of it anywhere you go. So if you're looking for something that um, has a wide range of potential options, I think cybersecurity is a good way to go. Just a couple of minutes. I recognize some names on here, but uh, for those who don't know me, I am Kimberly. I am a lecturer in cybersecurity. Uh, at the moment, I mostly teach across third year and master level courses. One of the reasons why I'm here talking about the cybersecurity master's program. Um, I won't talk about my specializations. I don't think that's particularly useful for this uh, talk, but I think it's good to know that you know we do have in-depth experience. Um, I have also had experience not just in academia, but also in industry and a little bit in national labs. So as I mentioned before, you can find a little bit of security everywhere. So if you're interested in national security, um, industry, and academia, there are cybersecurity jobs in all those areas. Uh, not only is there a wide range of potential places to go, there is also a huge gap in the workforce. There is um, not enough security experts for all the security needs we have in the world. And this is not just um, in the UK, but it, this is a pretty global issue. So there are um, definitely many openings and in different places. Uh, for those who are curious about job security. In terms of what you'll actually learn and what you'll actually do, um, our program is set up to have a wide range of cybersecurity um, fundamentals, uh, essentials, and how we can apply these um, to different areas of the sector. We also uh, are very into, let me grab a pen, so at many stages of development, implementation, implementation and management of cybersecurity systems. So all the stages, if you're interested more in um, active pen testing or higher management, we do, sh we do kind of go over the skills for that range of things as well. If you are not familiar with computing, um, that's okay. We do teach a lot of similar things about uh, software, computer systems, networking, to make sure you do have the foundation required. So things like uh, analysis and design, programming, databases and networks, all these things that are critical to cybersecurity, um, we do teach those um, from kind of uh, the ground up. In addition to understanding the technical aspect, like I mentioned, some people might be more interested in policy or management. So understanding the people involved in the sector and the people you'll be talking with and how to communicate with people both who understand cybersecurity and those who don't um, in a professional setting. Uh, and I, as I mentioned, um, wider than just technical, things like legislation, uh, regulatory requirements. There are uh, many of those in the sector and also the growing ethical consideration. We have the management aspects, which kind of help diversify the possible jobs you could have. But we also have things like the ethical hacking, emphasis on both ethical and hacking. Um, security architects and cryptography, um, this kind of combines the understanding of the computing systems, um, but also introduces cryptography at a master's level. Um, so how to protect data, not just in storage, but in transit. Uh, in terms of operation and incidences, how to deal with those um, breaches, how to communicate that, how to deal with it technically. We have similar to the ethical hacking, which is a very practical thing, um, very practical skills and knowledge. We have the digital forensics and malware analysis. So understanding the threats out there and um, how to deal with them. 
Um, and lastly, we have a cyber physical systems module, which is looking at um, not just IT information technology, but operational technology as well. So we live in a world where um, a cyber attack doesn't only have cyber outcomes, because we talk about information being stolen, information being lost, but with our world becoming more connected with IoT and all these things, um, there is a, a possibility that a cyber attack could have a physical outcome. So there was news uh, recently about someone who died in a hospital uh, as the result of a cyber incident. So making sure that um, looking forward and understanding the problem going forward, um, these three all give a good foundation and practical skills for not just tackling cybersecurity issues today, but also um, ones that are coming up in the future. And as uh, when you get to your project, again, you can use everything you've learned and apply it to an interesting area. Um, to talk about that a bit, we do have a number of people working in cybersecurity. So uh, a wide range of backgrounds, expertise that are available to help both teach and guide projects. And as David mentioned for his AI um, pitch, um, we also have a lot of research that goes into uh, that our staff do that helps feed into the modules to keep them kind of um, up to date and relevant. So there are um, very strong links between teaching and leading ed, leading ed research that everyone does. Um, we have a number of people involved at various levels. So there's lots of different um, skill sets and um, to pull from. Interested in human business, IT security, infrastructure security, all these things. And we also have research that is local, national, and also international levels. So something that uh, these types of, um, if, you, if uh, we have international students, we can widen our range even more. So having an understanding of how um, things at an international level uh, exist and how they function. So um, it's an interesting possibility. In terms of uh, people we are um, connected with, we are connected with a number of industries and um, government organizations to help make sure, again, that there are jobs out there that this program will prepare you for. So we know what they're kind of looking for. We know what students are kind of interested in, and we're able to kind of match that up. In terms of impact, again, um, just a couple of headlines from recent research that we have done if that's of interest. And a number of books that um, show that we're actively engaged in adding to the um, security community. All right. Um, so I think I was supposed to keep that to 10 to 15 minutes. So we have time for questions. Um, apologies for the mix up on slides, um, but I think it worked out all right halfway through. Um, it, there's chat. Are we going to have anything in the field of digital forensics? Yes. So, oops, wrong way. Uh, sorry. Not sure what happened to the slides. Uh, is this sharing my screen? I think it is. 
Um, so for forensics, that is definitely something you'd see here. So in the second semester, and that will be paired with malware analysis. So that's kind of an interesting combination because you're looking at both um, forensics of people doing bad things in the digital space and also bad software doing things in the digital space. Um, what would you say the system, so someone's asked about requirements for the laptops. Um, so my understanding is that um, while it helps to have a laptop, you don't need one to run everything. Um, it's a little tricky now with COVID and everything being remote, but m we do have labs that you can use both physically and remotely that can do most of the heavy computing power. Um, so you would necessarily need a heavy grade computer um, for it. So each module will have a specialist in the area and we will have the infrastructure to support it. So we have VMs and hypervisors, um, remote access, physical access. So um, I wouldn't necessarily worry about is your laptop good enough for any of these modules, not just the security one. Uh, before I answer other questions, did that did that answer the two that I've had already? Are you happy with those? Oh, uh, sorry, did someone have a hands up? Yes, uh, yes, doctor, I am Mr. Ru. I have mm -hmm. a question. Is that okay to raise? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so I am from Sri Lanka. I am Mr. Sri Lanka, and my question is, uh, is there any way to the, the how due to this coronavirus situation due to the pandemic, is there any way to uh, complete this master's in online? I'm very interested in a master's program. Is there any possibility or something? Um, if I'm is, sorry, your question was, is it possible to do the master's completely online? Yes, ma'am. That's the question. Uh, Bogdan, is it okay if I double check with you? That's fine. Uh, hi, sir. I mean, what I can mention is that we did pretty much that. We had to do that this year. So most of the activities were online. Um, we provide support both in terms of, of lectures and labs to the, the students who, who decide to join us. And it is possible. We would very much want to have the students joining us on campus for face-to-face -face activities, but we understand that in quite a few of the cases, particularly this year, that was impossible. So yes, we have had students that have been doing this this year as well. They've been doing the, the masters online, fully, fully online. They weren't able to join us for face-to-face -face, uh, uh, sessions and we accommodated their needs. We, we had infrastructure available to them via uh, remote connectivity. We've got, I'm, I'm teaching myself in, in, uh, in one of the modules in ethical hacking and the students have weekly labs where they connect remotely to machines and they've got several virtual machines running in there and running various uh, uh, experiments. We prefer to do that uh, rather than tell the students, well, do it in your home and so on. Because as Kimberly mentioned, some of the environments are a bit, I shouldn't say dangerous, but we like to control them because there are environments where we have, we release malware, we, we actually have threats. We've got, we've got uh, um, uh, various pieces of, of software that are better off kept locked in a lab rather than released in the wild. So yes, we would, we would uh, we'd be able to accommodate a, a, an online option, I would say. While we encourage students to come on, we understand that that's not possible every time. So uh, they would be able to do it online as well. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, I wasn't sure about that one. So uh, another question that came in asking about quantum computing regarding cryptography. Um, so I think Assad is in char currently in charge of the cryptography course or module. Um, so it might be touched upon but there's kind of two ways I can answer this. I can either say, yes, we kind of do touch upon it. I know we're involved with IBM and they're very ahead of the game. Well, maybe not, you know, they're, they're in the game of, you know, quantum chips and all these things. So we definitely have avenues of teaching that. The other thing is if 
there isn't enough quantum for you in the teaching module. Um, we probably do have the expertise to help lead a master's project around that if you wanted to delve into the subject yourself for your project. So I think those are the kind of the two ways that that can be answered. Does, does that kind of help or were you asking for something a bit more specific? Uh, and in, are there any other questions? Yeah, okay, thank you, Shaswat. Yeah, so quantum was definitely touched upon in cryptography and as I, as I just mentioned, cool. Great. Anything else from the group? I think almost everyone has asked one question. Oh, no, maybe not. Um, there's a question on, would it be possible to carry out an internship along with a master's? Um, I'm not entirely clear. Do you mean like part-time at the same time or with a gap in the middle? Part-time. Um, yeah, that seems to be okay. I think um, there can be agreements. So you you have a, a, as part if we talk from a from a, a visa perspective, you can work up to twenty hours per week. Um, quite a few of the jobs won't be specialist ones, but we have had in the past we have had uh, uh, students that had jobs even linked to the the um, IT infrastructure and facilities on campus. Nobody, it's very unlikely, let's put it this way, it's very unlikely that you'll end up being a malware analyst or a, a, um, a security, uh, IT security officer during your MSc because you're still building up your, your, your knowledge. But you, you, there, are, there were cases where there were students that were working with, uh, with the IT departments. Um, I imagine sort of the, the question was relating to a, to a as Kimberly mentioned, as a, a part-time job rather than a full-time one. After that, once you finish the, the MSc, you're over to the, the wild uh, uh, um, ecosystem that is the, the, the market, and you will apply for jobs same as the other, the other graduates. We have quite a few job opportunities, and I get every year, I get uh, emails from companies which ask me, well, could you recommend me a student? I need, I, I know the students from Plymouth are really good. Recommend me one from this year. I need a student for this particular area. Sometimes I recommend, sometimes I encourage the students to apply and to, to, to convince themselves, the, the, the employer. Um, but quite often we get uh, uh, students who are basically taken away from the, uh, from right within the, um, the, um, the study. One more thing that I thought I'd mention, both relating to, to David and to Kimberly's talk, is your project. Your project, apart from that lovely piece of paper that has got very, very interesting signatures and very interesting logos on it, and it says, you've got an MSc. Your other uh, um, qualification badge is your MSc. So make sure you make the best out of the MSc and you do something that you really like and something that is really just to use Luciana's words from the beginning when she, when she mentioned about data science, something really sexy that the industry wants. You will have support from the team here because there's plenty of research and there are plenty of, of industry contacts going on. But make sure it's, it's something, as I said, something that you want and don't do it just for the sake of it. Do it because you're passionate about it and do it because you actually want to, to continue with a career in, in, in it. And both uh, uh, myself and, and Kimberly um, attract students for their MSc projects and we tend to link them to our ongoing research, ongoing uh, uh, high level PhD or postdoctoral research work because it's, it, it, they all integrate very well with what we're interested in. Yep, I definitely agree. Um, yeah, and as I mentioned, there's there's so many different ways you can, you know, launch from this point that the the project really helps define which direction you want to go into. 